when I invited Velma and Vivian to hear a guest speaker at Olivet College when I worked there as the Associate Vice President of Diversity and Community Affairs. The guest speaker was Margaret T. Burroughs, founder of the DeSalvo Museum of African American History in Chicago, one of the first museums devoted to black history and culture in the United States. She passed away in 2010 at the young age of 95. But when speaking about her journey to establish the Sabo Museum, I can still hear her say those words that Booker T. Washington spoke. Cast down your bucket where you are. She started the DeSalvo in her living room. I received that statement, cast down your bucket where you are, to mean don't get caught up in what you don't have, what other folks say you can or can't do, or I'll start it when speech, but instead cast down your bucket where you are and get to work. That's what Dr. Velma Laws Clay did in her life, and most famously in 1995, when the late Michael Marvich first approached her with a mission that changed her life and ours. He informed her that it was Sojourner Truth's 200th birthday anniversary. He felt she could carry the task off, and she set out to learn as much as she could about Sojourner Truth. She even played her that year. The Sojourner Truth Monument was commissioned by the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women and sculpted by the late Tina Allen, who was here when it was unveiled in 1999. Fast forward to today, I have taken a journey to freedom with Dr. Clay and Mrs. Ritter through their traveling art exhibit from their private collection. I have learned not just African American history, but history through these lovely women and through their art collections and conversation. And I've witnessed their love for family, community, and neighborhoods, and the importance of connecting them all. Therefore, <clears throat> on this day, October 11, 2016, it is my honor and privilege to connect all that she lifted up in her life and remember her in this way with a commemorative street sign for her contribution to the city of Battle Creek. Additional confirmation that this was a great way to honor Dr. Clay was when we looked up the definition of the, stir, the term street. Looking at the family home right behind you and the street that she was so proud of, Hubbard Street, street specifically applied to urban roadways and the streets connect people for interaction. I'd like to thank what she did all over the city and the world, connected people for interaction. You'll hear that throughout the remarks today as we celebrate Dr. Velma Laws Clay, the Laws family, neighborhoods, and community. We also know that Dr. Clay was civically engaged. Trust me, she and the family had an opinion regarding farming in their neighborhood. <laughs> but like she always did, she tied what she did to our history, and things worked themselves out. In addition, she believed strongly in voting, and with that, we felt it was appropriate to invite A. Philip Randolph, who sat over right back there, Institute, our President of Boris Ali, to register any residents who are U.S. citizens and will be 18 on or before November 8th, the November 8th general election. So please see them if you haven't registered or if you need voting information, they have that at their table. So let's begin with our first speaker who are focusing their comments on community and they have a sense of community. That would be our own and my boss, Brenda Hunt. <laughs> from, <laughs> from, you know, I had to start off, with, I had to start off strong. Uh, Brenda Hunt from the, uh, President and CEO from the Battle Creek Community Foundation. Uh, now, if you see her kind of take off after a minute, she has another conflicting appointment, but she wanted to make sure she came. So um, we're gonna start with Brenda, and then um, my, my other good friend and connection, um, that would be the city manager, Rebecca Fleury. 
So we'll have them come in that order. At this time, let's welcome Brenda. Good afternoon, everybody. The only reason I'm leaving this celebration is because I think Velma would want me to. Uh, because of the initiative that uh, they've called us in to take a look at for Battle Creek becoming part of, okay? So I'll explain that in a few minutes, but what an important day we have here today. Today is one of those days where we stick another pole in the concrete, concrete, all right? And we make some announcements about well, how Velma's work continues in our community. And what I'm about to say is that it couldn't come at a better time. And somehow I know Velma knew that. Right. So on August 5th, 2015, Velma came down to the office at the Battle Creek Community Foundation. And many of you know that she served six years on the Board of Trustees and was chair of the board. The other part was she was the first African American chair of the board in 2001 at the Battle Creek Community Foundation. She came down. She came down in 2015 uh, to discuss her original goals and intentions for creating the Sojourner Truth Institute. And clearly she said, it's not done. And clearly, she was right. And while we have a beautiful best in the country monument and tribute to a great leader, leader Sojourner Truth, and we clearly use this as a special gathering place that is so significant to our healing, Velma wanted to use the monument as a pillar, a pillar for education, change, freedom, and yes, humanity. She saw the word institute as in the Sojourner Institute to mean and be so much more. Educational programs in our schools, creative expression, understanding and living, truly living freedom for all people every day. A community celebration event focused on Sojourner Truth and our African American heritage, an actual institute for higher learning, understanding humanity, understanding ourselves, eliminating racism. Clearly she knew, much like Sojourner, that is the mind that makes the body. And on this day, when we commemorate the life of Dr. Velma Laws Clay, our beloved Velma, let us finish this vision. Let's create the Sojourner Institute as Velma had envisioned and beyond. I can think of no better tribute. I can think of no better time to a life well lived and a gift that Velma gave to us and a wish and a hope and a vision that she saw. And as Velma, as, and as Sojourner said, and I'm sure Velma would concur, we cannot ignore all that is around us at this time. Life is a hard battle anyway. If we laugh and sing a little as we fight the good fight of freedom, it makes all go easier. I will not allow my life's light to determine, be determined by the darkness all around, said Sojourner Truth. Velma is our shining star. I'm on my way back down to Kellogg Foundation to discuss how we can become a healing center, a truth telling center, truth, racial healing, transformation, and the elimination of racism starting right here in Battle Creek. Let this begin today with a commemoration of Velma's life, this street, and all it stands for. Thank you. Rebecca? Good afternoon again. 
So Lynn got to introduce her boss, and Lynn is my boss. It just seems very apropos, one of my nine bosses. <laughs> um, but thank you all for joining us on this very, very special occasion. It is my honor to be able to address you today and say a few words about a fellow WMU alum. Go Broncos! Woohoo! Broncos! Yes! Roll the roll the boat. Roll the boat. Yes. Um, creating a sense of place has become a buzzword in communities. And Dr. Belmalaw's play was way ahead of her time. She knew how important a sense of place was and put all her energy in making sure her hometown became a destination for people, for all people to live and enjoy. It is fitting today that she become a part of the fabric of our community as an honorary street name, as she embedded so many of her passions into the community so that everywhere we look, we see a little bit of her. One of the most visible, visible pieces, as um, Brenda described, is the Sojourner Truth statue, a true gem in Monument Park. She rises for all to see and admire. Earlier this summer, she received some special attention to her, to her exterior, so she will continue to shine through our Michigan elements, and you know they can be a little bit harsh <laughs> at times, because the city is very committed to the health and well-being of that statute, and I see Todd Gerber here from our field services. He oversees the that particular statue and takes very good care of her and makes sure that she's well cared for. But recently, I, Brenda talked about just what that statue means to the community and how it draws people. We have, um, we have a, a further story about that. Recently, we learned, some of Todd's staff learned some amazing stories about visitors to that statue. Several have shared their stories, and they've come from far off, far off places to share that, as far away as Australia and India, just to see that particular statue in Battle Creek. We want to continue those dialogues to support this and to continue to promote that piece of our Battle Creek history that Dr. Clay's brought to life. Um, staff members are working to put together a, a store, an online story map about the statue. This will allow us to post photos that we've taken of the monument and other significant historical pieces of, um, regarding Sojourner Truth, even the most recent mural downtown. And we anticipate it will also allow visitors to post and upload their own photos and stories taken about their experience in Battle Creek. So truly, this has become a gathering place for worldwide people to come to experience Battle Creek, to experience the history that we have, and I think fulfilling the vision of Dr. Clay's it's, it's just amazing the more stories that we hear. All from the vision of one incredible woman, a woman who with, was so passionate about her community and her neighborhood, her church, African American history and advancing knowledge that we celebrate her today and we remember her works with an honorary street in her name. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rebecca and Brenda such timely activities going on in our city at such a time as this. At this time, we're going to bring up um, a little sense of connection to history and African American history through Elizabeth Neumeyer, who's representing the Historical Society of Battle Creek Sojourner Truth Institute, and Shirley Tuggle, who's the president of the Battle Creek Club of the National Association of Negro and Business professional women, and they will come in that order. Elizabeth. Good afternoon. I'm representing the Historical Society of Battle Creek today. Our president, Mark Lambert, was not able to be present. Thank you to Lynn, to the city of Battle Creek, for this honorary street name for Velma. Last month at our annual meeting, we dedicated the Sojourner Truth exhibit room at the Kimball House to Velma as a memorial. She's been a valuable member of our society, as you well know, and of Heritage Battle Creek, which is an umbrella group that takes in our society, uh, the Community and Research Archives, and the Sojourner Truth Institute, which Velma helped form in 1998 uh, to continue the 200th anniversary of Sojourner's birth. Uh, folks, it's not possible in three minutes to talk about everything Velma's done to preserve history in Battle Creek or in our state, our nation. But I do want to let you know this. 
See magazine issue of February 27th, or February 217, will be devoted to Velma. We always have a history issue. Every year, Mary Butler and I sit around debating, well, what will we write about this year? Well, this year was no problem. Of course, it's Velma. And we'll fill in a lot of the details, including the origin of the street. You know that I write street articles about why these things happen the way they do and what Hubbard that Velma grew up on. Uh, I also, at the request of Dorothy Martich, nominated Velma for the Battle Creek Central High School Hall of Fame. I was stunned that she wasn't in it. In fact, I had to check. I said, Dorothy, are you sure? Uh, and she wasn't, so I'm hoping when they announce it in a few weeks, <laughs> her name will be there. And it's also our plan, as the Historical Society, place her name in nomination for the Michigan Women's History Hall of Fame. Sojourner Truth is there. Mary Mayo's there. Ella Eaton Kellogg is there. It seems only appropriate Velma should be there too. Sojourner Truth said she was not going to die. She was going to become a shooting star. Well, that's Velma for us too, isn't it? A role model a shining light, a tsunami of energy, love, and hope for Battle Creek and for our future. So thank you, Velma. I'm glad to see this honor happening for you today and many, many others. Our shooting star. Thank you. I am Shirley Tuggle, Valma, and Vivian, and I all grew up within a block of each other. So I have known her all of my life. And what we shared was our love of history, as well as the legacy of Sojourner Truth. It was, I wasn't that old when I found out that some of the descendants of Sojourner Truth were the McGleeches, and they were our playmates and going to school together. So over time, Velma took her legacy and kept perpetuating, and I joined an organization called the National Association of Negro Business and Professional Women Incorporated. Therefore, we came together again because the matriarch of NANBPW is Sojourner Truth. And we have over 45 years worked in conjunction with Velma on whatever level she wanted to keep the legacy of Sojourner Truth intact and honored for not only the city of Battle Creek, but for the state of Michigan to have such a woman as this who walked these streets and helped everyone. Diversity was always front of her mind. And so under the BPW label, the statue came about and we all marched and participated in that. And as the highest honor that the National Association can render, Velma was given the Sojourner Truth Life medal for her work in this community. She also came to me a couple years ago and she talked about the Institute and what she saw for the future. And she said, I want you back with me as we keep the legacy of Sojourner Truth going. And I said, okay. And so we've been working on that to keep the legacy going. And now we have her counterpart here in Battle Creek to help us. We have Vivian who's going to help us keep that memory going. And so I want to take this time to invite all of you because we are not going to let her vision die. We will celebrate the annual Sojourner Truth holiday this November. And so we'd like to see all of you there 
November the 20th, and it will be at United Methodist Church downtown from which she was buried from that church. So you are all welcome, November 20th, probably about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon, to come out as we celebrate, once again, the legacy of Sojourner Truth, along with a memorial program for our own Dr. Velma Laws Clay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Liz and Shirley. We are so happy to get that good news. Uh, about what's happening on that program for Sojourner Truth Day that's been celebrated for many, many years. I can't even remember how long. That's, but uh, decade, over a decade, that's awesome. Well, what would be a celebration or an unveiling without some music? And uh, we are very fortunate to have with us uh, the brother of Dr. Clay and Count Laws, who will render a selection at this time. Count? Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He hath loosed the faithful lightning of his terrible swift sword. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea. With a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free. While God is marching on, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, his truth is marching on. That is one distinctive voice. Thank you so much, Count. That was wonderful. So at this time, we're going to bring up uh, again our pastor, Pastor Reverend uh, William J. Wine. He's right here somewhere. There he is. Yep. He's going to come up and kind of speak about his work with Dr. Clay as well as the inaugural um, recipient of the In the Spirit <laughs> of Martin and Mandela Award that she received. Um, one of the, uh, the joys of being the pastor of Second Baptist, which is the best Second Baptist church in this town, <laughs> is that you run across people who who challenge you. And Dr. Velma Lawrence Clay uh, always challenged me in such a warm, respectful way. You know, all of us should learn, she always felt that anything you wanted or needed, you ought to find in Battle Creek. She believed so much in this community. I mean, from everything. She just thought that this community ought to have everything that a citizen of this community should have. And she just absolutely, just what sometimes says, doesn't make sense for me to have to go over there to get this. Doesn't make sense. And so if Velma Clay taught me anything as a pastor, she always taught me to at least expect the best. And she was always willing 
to give her best to everything she was engaged in. One of the great joys about being with her is that I don't care if you were down, she could lift you up. I don't care if it was bleak, she always saw the positive side. And so I carry with me periodically uh, gestures. And sometimes when I'm with, with her, Vivian, I'm like, oh my God, yes. Oh God. And sometimes when I'm with her and that happened, it just reminds me that Velma Lost Clay will live a long time. I am so grateful, so grateful that I ended up being her pastor because what a great inspiration she was and a great supporter she was to both me, Josie, and that church. And so we, we are just absolutely blessed uh, that Velma Clay passed our way. And I think that the greatest tribute that we can ever make to Velma Lost Clay, especially is to teach young African-American girls that they can be anything they want to be. And that they have the ability to achieve any place and go anywhere they want to go. Because Velma Lost Clay believed that when you look into yourself and see the beauty of yourself, you can excel and be anything you want to be. So thank you, God, for giving us Velma Lost Clay and for blessing us with her spirit. Well, amen to that. Thank you, Pastor Wyatt. All right, at this time, we're almost there. We're going to talk about uh, well, the sense of neighborhood. And we have, of course, someone from the neighborhood. And we're talking about neighborhoods and her ability to connect folks from all across this city. So we're going to bring up James Williamson, also a church member, fellow church member, to talk about the historic Willis Commons. And our sense of neighborhoods. If you'd like to stay right there. Oh, you wanna come up, all right. As much as I would like to say the kinds of things that could be said about the neighborhood, we'd have to spend longer than the program would allow. So to keep it down to the two minutes that uh, I have been given, our neighborhood covers a block, starting with Hubbard Street, Moffitt, down to the corner, to the second corner, and back to here. When I look at how many families we had that interrelated to each other, there was a whole lot of families. And at that time, the holiday that is coming up will not be the same because there won't be that many children knocking on the door to ask for a trick or treat. Just to call off a few families, on the corner of Hubbard Moffitt is the we was the Williamson family and still is the Williamson family. Next door was the, uh, was the Blunt family. Of course, this was the Laws family. Right here was the Sam's family in the Blue House. That was, I'll just say, a lot of children that dwell within that household. Uh, across the street, um, oh goodness. I'll just say the Pomelias and so forth was down in this, in this area. The Thompsons was across on Moffitt Street. The Brown family, uh, the Kurt family, Pomelias. Um, and we enjoyed a lot of things. On the back street, you know what street that is, right? The one that goes this way, on the opposite of Hubbard? Yeah, Jordan. Jordan. On that street lived a family that had about eight children. Everyone in that family was left-handed except the mother. <laughs> okay? Uh, and then on Moffitt, there was the Thompson family, and they had a bunch of children also. I'm not gonna to try to go too far with a lot of things that, that uh, happened, but one thing that I will say about the families of this block is that we got together often. 
And uh, one of the best holiday meals that I know we share with family members here was in this little creature right there that's called a garage. These, these wonderful people who had the last name Laws had it laid out with so much food that we couldn't eat it all if we had to come back twice. And some of us wanted to come back twice. But we took home the carry out, so to speak, and it was great. But the families in this neighborhood was together. They shared a lot of events together. They did things together. I even remember this one young man who used to come in our yard and play. And I said, what is your name? Count la 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 laws. I said, who? And he would go count the la la laws. And then we would play and do all those wonderful things that kids do and have a lot of fun. So I want you to know that this neighborhood was a great neighborhood. It shared a lot of things together. It shared holidays and just day-to-day -day kind of activities that made us enjoy being with each other. So thank you. Thank you so much, James. And at this point, if Jerry Yuri is here uh, from Signs and Designs, the sign creator for this beautiful historic Willis Common sign. I'll ask him to come forward. But if not, then we are at the final speakers who are none other than Count Laws and um, Vivian Laws Ritter. So I'm going to start with her twin sister, Vivian Laws Ritter, at this time. First of all, I just want to express my gratitude and appreciation to all of you for being here to share this moment. The past few weeks have been difficult, but the beautiful expressions of the dedication Sorry. of my twin sister, Dr. Velma Laws Clay, had for the community of Battle Creek won't allow me to settle into a sad spirit. As most of you know, I very seldom say just my sister. I have to say twin sister because we were so close. She was the bridge that kept me connected to my hometown of Battle Creek. Each time I came home, there was always something to do, some place to go, and I was involved through my connection to her. She anointed me with the National Ambassador title, which I utilized to share all things happening in Battle Creek with Washington, D.C., and vice versa, regarding Sojourner Truth and, of course, the art world. This sharing brought together people and established a real national link. Part of that national link was a quote Dr. Clay loved. And I quote, Sojourner's hometown is our hometown. And that resonated both in Washington, if I'm in Seattle or in Los Angeles, it was always a nice phrase that caught everyone's attention. Another historic connection Dr. Clay was instrumental in starting is the Willis Commons Neighborhood Vision in 1960, 1996. That vision quoted in part, it will be quiet, safe, and well kept. It will be a strictly residential where people want to live, raise their children, and grow old together. One of the greatest contributions to, in the history of our city, 
lies in the 40 years Henry Willis engaged in assisting hundreds of slaves, both black and white, to find the land of liberty. He had the courage to stand up for freedom. And out of all those things, the most important that he did was he bought, he was the first person to bring Sojourner Truth to Battle Creek to speak. And that was at the greeting house where St. Philip's Church now stands. So if it were not for that, Sojourner might have sojourned somewhere else. But she arrived here in Battle Creek, Michigan, and we made her welcome. An example of Dr. Clay wanting to make a difference is right here before us. She brought together the neighbors and shared the vision and research. This sign represents the vision. The word commons relates to the community as a whole. The Liberty Bell was chosen as a logo based on Willis's activity in helping slaves escape and advocating freedom for all. In 1998, my twin sister and best friend was awarded the Neighborhood Associations of Michigan Leadership Award for the vision, courage, and character demonstrated through her commitment to improving the quality of life in her community. The award was shaped in a wood carving representing the state of Michigan. Now, she was our leader, but let me assure you that we knocked on every door in the community. We got to know the residents there, and out of that came the joy that for our parents who had deceased, there were those who remembered when we were growing up here. And they were so pleased that through the years, we returned home to complete the legacy that our parents tried to establish. I don't know about you, but in most families, when your parents work hard to get something for you, you ought to take care of it. And that's what we've been doing for 30 years. And one other point that Mr. Williams made was beautiful, but what really was gorgeous, one midnight at dark, the moon was out, when all of the neighbors would gather, we planted all of the lights in each of the yards. Well, sis was right there, and Mr. Williams turned on the camera, and you could see the night glow all the way up and down the street. It was a beautiful sight, but even more beautiful, the neighbors were there hugging one another at midnight, so it was a safe place. It was okay to be out after midnight. So that in itself was a testimony to what neighborhoods can do. In closing, I would like to share a quote of President Obama with you. This honorary street naming ceremony seems appropriate. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. I believe in my heart, Dr. Velma Lost Clay embraced this and did all she could while here on earth to make a difference. And I know this from the testimonies that I have been blessed to hear and to be a part of. And I thank you for listening and allowing me to recall a few memories that Sis and I shared that brought joy to our hearts. Thank you.
keep the flame alive. My sister, Velma Laws Clay, was to me essentially a peacemaker. In the family, making peace, but also in the community. A warrior for peace, if you will. A reconciler between all factions of the body politic. She was never about herself, but always about the greater good. In this, she reflected Sojourner Truth's legacy the best. So today, because of a life lived honoring others, she herself will be honored in a way befitting one so committed. So keep the flame alive as she would have wanted. The flame of truth in racial reconciliation ships, in education, in politics, in religion, in social relations, in all aspects in which our lives touch one another. In this spirit, will her legacy live on, along with that of Henry Willis, Sojourner Truth, the Laws family, Mr. Timothy Laws Sr., Ms. Juanita R. Laws, her mother, Ronald Douglas Laws, her brother, Timothy Rogers Laws Jr., brother, Don Cecil Laws, brother, myself, Connell Laws, and of course, the twin sister and best friend, Vivian Laws Ritter. And all the residents of Historic Willis Commons. That would be, appropriately today, the Bama Laws Clay Way. Thank you. Thank you so much, Count and Vivian. That was beautiful. So um, at this time, I just have a couple of thank yous before we unveil. Um, I want to start with the city staff. Um, we've been working on this for months, ever since uh, Dr. Clay passed. Um, Ty Gerber is here. Um, Phil Lara, who's from the Signs Department, I believe. Um, and then just so many folks that I probably don't know, and I think this B likes me. <laughs> um, Carl English, who's videotaping today uh, for Access Vision, we thank him. My baby, Sam, <laughs> for helping me out with the setup. Thank you. And um, all the speakers who said yes without hesitation for uh, the, the program today. And of course, um, Dr. Clay's siblings who are here with us, Count Laws and Vivian Laws Ritter. I know there's also some elected officials and some candidates in the audience, so I'll get them to raise their hands so you guys know who to go talk to <laughs> if, uh, if you want to have great conversation. I thank them for coming. And finally, in a piece that was done by the Battle Creek Shopper News when we received the inaugural In the Spirit of Martin and Mandela Award, Dr. Clay stated, she'll never forget the pinnacle moment when the Monument Committee Vice Chairman Michael Evans, who I tried to find today but was unable to be here, announced to the huge crowd gathered for the unveiling, are you ready for truth? So in our case, we know where truth is. We're going to say for such a time as this and in the spirit of Dr. Clay, we'll say those same words as we unveil the honorary Dr. Velma Laws Clay Way sign so she can hear us. We'll walk over here and I hope we can get this done right. Come on over. <laughs> the sign colors that were selected were brown and gold to commemorate um, where Dr. K Clay received her three degrees, Western Michigan University. And of course, so Turner Truth can't be far behind. So at this time, are you ready for truth? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Go ahead. Honorary Dr. Delma Long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.
thank you everyone for being here today. And thank you to the family. And there's some refreshments over under the tent if you'd like some. <laughs> Your voice, your community.